Modern matriarchs. So let's open this up. This is a female led relationship has become more common than ever, ever as women are increasingly viewed as equal, powerful and able to take on a formerly masculine. What does that mean? A formerly masculine role? Are they are they purporting that men are like trying to abandon masculinity? Or is it because you're trying to squeeze it out of us by constantly calling us toxically masculine and all that nonsense? Anyway, let's see what this article says here. This is from Couples Candy, The Ultimate Beginner's Guide to Female-Led Relationships by author Megan Harrison. This is a January, this is a very recent article. So here's Megan. Hi, I'm Megan and welcome to Couples Candy. Here you'll find lots of practical information dedicated to enhancing your relationship and boosting your well-being. As a marriage and family therapist, I love helping people reconnect with their partners in order to experience greater satisfaction from their relationships. All right, let's see what Megan Harrison has to uh, tell us about female-led relationships. So identifying importance of boundaries, the perks, the drop. All right, let's go to uh, the different types. Identifying importance of boundaries, female. Let's see what their boundaries are. Communicate openly, find a comfortable balance, discuss your expectations. Ah, that's standard mumbo jumbo, new wave stuff. Discuss your expectations. Okay, types of female. Level one. Oh, they have levels, fellas. <laughs> they have le here. You know what? I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna show off my brand new desk. Check this out. Hey, clickety click, barba trick. Look at that. Stand up and do this. Do this show. Why not? Oh, there we go. Let's give this a go. Stand up desks are fun. Level one, lower female control. This FLR level involves at least power differential. Both parties make nearly all decisions together. That sounds like an equal partnership. With the female taking control only in specific previously agreed on situations. So equal with her having slightly more control. In some cases, couples decide to initiate a female-led relationship, but transitioning to a power role is difficult for the women. Asserting dominance may feel foreign or uncomfortable. That's because it is. That's because it always has been, for the most part, throughout history. But just ignore history. Who cares? We'll just, you know, let's just throw it all on a women's show. They don't want to lead, guys. They hate it. They want you to they want to look up to a giant. They want to be with a guy that's competent and knows what he's doing. Anyway, it may take some time and encouragement for a woman to move from passive to a dominant role. It's not uncommon for couples to shift to a higher level of female dominance once the woman's comfort level increases. All right, level 2, moderate. Let's see what moderate looks like. When the woman takes on a more moderate level of control in the relationship, she's typically more comfortable in her dominant role. She is generally the primary decision maker. That would suck. Men in this, that's, that basically sounds like most men's marriages today though, right? Doesn't it? She ends up being the primary decision maker. Men in this dynamic tend to enjoy taking on a more passive persona and prefer to be subservient in areas of the relationship. Although many couples are content to stay in a moderately female controlled relationship, men who love to be dominated and women who love to dominate often up the ante by transitioning to a more formal level. While sexual kinks are commonly explored at this level, okay, so basically he's a bitch. The female isn't necessarily in charge of the couple's sex life, though her desires may be prioritized. Okay, let's skip. Uh, there's oh, there's level three now. Define control. You know what? Let's just go right to level four. Extreme female control immersion, because I think this is what, probably what most guys experience today in their marriages once they go through the betaization process. Betatization by a thousand concessions. Good for you, good for me. Okay, level four. Couples who enter in an extreme FLR are immersed in female domination and male submissiveness. The female takes complete control on the relationship, deciding how her partner spends his time and how finances are handled. Gee, that sounds familiar. Where did we hear that before? That was right here. Then her controlling ramped up with increased fighting, roller coaster indeed, and she demanded my obedience, my time, who I associated with, and freedom were under her control. Right? Sounds familiar. 
Okay, where were we at? Male active servant, submit to a partner. At this level, nearly if not every aspect of the male's actions are dictated by the female. He'll likely dress to please a woman and submit to her every desire, both inside and outside the house. These women would never, never get away with this shit with me. This, like, any guy that submits to this nonsense, you're basically a beta bitch. Like, you're a plugged-in beta for sure. You are, you are not living your best life. You're not mental point of origin. And at the end of the day, on a balance of probabilities, I would say she's probably got something set up like they're in a polyamorous relationship where she can go pork wherever she wants. So she's ended up, she ends up with like the subservient beta, the plugged in beta that she controls his every aspect of his life while she goes out on the weekend to pork Chad and Tyrone. He'll likely dress to please. Sexually, every kink explored is based on the woman's wants, needs, and desires. Probably dude sits in the corner while she gets, you know, you know what I'm saying? Uh, the couple may delve into hardcore BDSM. At the other extreme, the woman may require complete chastity from her partner. The man has little to no say in the relationship or the bedroom. <laughs> so, again, you're basically a little bitch. Previously agreed on punishments can be a turn on for both partners. As long as the dynamic is consensual, this extreme level of female dominance in a relationship can be successful. All right, let's see what else our friend, what was her name again? Megan? Hi, I'm Megan. That's it. All right, what else do they have here for us? That does not sound like fun. A few notes regarding, like even, like, even guys when they lead relationships, they don't do any of this nonsense. Rarely. I mean, if they do, they're a little messed up in the head. You know, kind of kind of flipping the script, if you know what I'm saying. Like, where was that guy's comment? So let's just flip the words around. Then him controlling ramped up with increased fighting. A roller coaster indeed. And he demanded my obedience, my time, who I associate with, and freedom or under his control. Now, some might argue, but Rich, you've said you've got to make sure that she doesn't go off to Vegas with her girlfriends for a weekend. Correct. If she wants to go, let her go, right? It's just when she comes back, make sure her bags are packed on the front porch and the lock is changed. It's as simple as that. You're not demanding she do something. It's, hey, I don't date women like that. I don't live with women like that. I'm not going to be in a relationship with a woman that behaves like that. Girlfriends with boyfriends don't go to Vegas, you know, to hang out with their girlfriends for a bachelorette party. Doesn't go down. A few notes regarding at the different levels. She says, my number one piece of advice to couples entering a female-led relationship or progressing to more extreme levels is to communicate about any modifications you wish. Yeah, communicate, communicate, commu negotiate, communicate. That's usually the standard talking points from the plugged-in narrative, right? You just have to negotiate. Nope, don't negotiate. That's, that's, by the way, one of the flaws that I find with Jordan Peterson's conversations is whenever he's talking about relationships i've heard him often make reference to well then you negotiate you know something in the relationship and you don't you can have conversations about stuff but you're not negotiating like well i'll, I'll do this and then you do that uh, i mean anytime you try to negotiate anything in a relationship it often leads to resentment long term um, you just don't respect the other person while they can certainly uh, natural progress in open communication blah 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 negotiate uh you and your partner will listen to you decide which level of dominance so talk about what level you want to be do you want to be level four extreme extreme dominance or do you want to go level one lower female control megan's got all the notes here for you okay why women love female-led relationships okay this will this will be good i discussed sorry i discussed flr with many happily partnered women while pre partnered <laughs> Not married, not in a relationship, partnered. There's that word again, right? The progressive word, partnered. I discussed female-led relationship with many happily partnered women while preparing to write this guide. When asked why these ladies enjoy this type of relationship, they offer the following answers. I like being in control. I like knowing who handles the finances and who is in charge of meals and how... <laughs> so, sorry, let me just reread that. I like knowing who handles the finances and she has me in bracket. And who is in charge of meals and housework? Him in brackets. 
My professional life is chaotic, stressful, and unpredictable, so I like having full control at home. Vicky. Let's see what Paige has to say. I felt com I guarantee Vicky is probably one of these chicks with a piece of paper framed in mahogany with little letters after her name, working at an accounting firm, law firm, uh, a medical clinic, something, right? And then she comes home and browbeats the shit out of her husband. Get the meals and housework ready, Bill. I felt comfortable. So who's next? Paige. I felt comfortable asking my husband if we could try a female-led relationship because he liked to be dominated in bed. The great sex life. He had zero motivation in everyday life. But he had zero motivation in everyday life. Well, that turns off women, doesn't it? No wonder she's taking a lead. And I was beyond bored with our marriage. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Our new dominant submissive roles have spiced up our entire relationship. He is completely submissive to me now, and we both love it. There's no going back. <laughs> the clock is ticking down to all of these relationships, all of these stories. What do we got here in the super chats? So what she's saying is she wants a loser to all the things that she wants. Pretty much. Uh, F psycho, <laughs> F and psychos, yeah. <laughs> Oh, man. Uh, Nav Navia? What is that name? Navia? I don't know. Nev. I've always found my boyfriend attractive, but he lacked a lot of the qualities I was looking for a partner. By taking charge of our relationship, I've helped him become the best version of himself. He holds a powerful role at work, but has become subservient at home. He enjoys the contrast, and I find him sexier than ever. I wonder what these people look like. I just, you know, I picture... I picture the fat acceptance crowd covered in tattoos with pronouns like the alphabet soup pronouns going on. I, I don't know, man. What do these people look like? I, I, I got to ask the question. I got to ask the question, you know. Our relationship is a peaceful one. This is Amy. We have clear roles and rules. We have no trouble sticking to them. We've been, sorry, we've both been much more content since transitioning. Yeah, I wonder who transitioned. Did somebody transition? <laughs> I love being cherished. My boyfriend and I have been in the FLR for six years now. He has made me feel loved and appreciated every day. I'm very much the dominant and he's passive. Aside from showing his adoration for me, this lifestyle just works for us. We both feel more valued than we did in our previous relationships. You know what? I bet there's a way here. Let's do this. I'm going to minimize this. And so modern matriarchs. Let's see, because let's get an idea of, because I said, you know, what do these people look like? So who's following this page here? And we have dominatrix, mistresses. Oh, here, I can put this up on the screen. I mean, this is public. We're probably not going to run into too much trouble with the YouTubes. Oh, look, Jason Momoa and Lisa Bonet are given their marriage another chance. Probably another female-led relationship. She's like, what, 55 and he's 40 or something? Anyway, uh, dominatrix, Lady Becky Rose, more dominatrix, female-led university, dominatrix, dominatrix, women, women. Okay, so there's no dudes that I'm seeing yet. It's mostly dominatrixes, I think. Mark Hamill follows this page. Isn't that fucking Luke Skywalker? What a nerd. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Uh, looks like Tate was right about Star Wars, wasn't he? <laughs> uh, we got Alice, the flirty girl, Jessica, Queen Beast, um, Cardi B. Cardi B. Is it like the Cardi B? Diamond Poche. Yeah, Cardi B follows this shit too. Are you surprised? Like, isn't she the one that like drugged a bunch of guys and stole their shit? Or is that somebody else? I... I lose track. You guys let me know in the comments, right? Yeah, I think it was my love for Star Wars. <laughs> Mark Hamill. A uh, bunch of women. Well, we got Mark Hamill, Dr. Daniel Grossman. Okay, another academic dork that's trying to convince people. Well, it's a lot of like hot women and dominatrix typing look, type of looking women, right? And a couple of celebrities here and there. I'm not seeing any real men in here. Like, I'm, okay, when I say real men, I'm talking about like conventionally masculine. Oh, hang on a second. 
here's a dorky couple here with the co-creator of male chastity day there you go there's your standard there's your female-led relationship couple right there keyhole it's called aphrodite sweet mamisa yeah i think a lot of these women that i i mean i can't tell hashtag blm pronouns in the bios i can't tell uh between the dominatrixes and like the regular women but um the regular women should probably get used to like liking cats and uh box wine subscriptions because that's pretty much what you end up with in an unhappy ltr dealing with that because conventionally the vast majority of men um are definitely preferring more feminine women i'm talking like conventionally masculine like unplugged alpha males prefer feminine women that are just attractive beauties right um, and those women like to be in the frame of strong masculine men that know how to protect them. Can preside, can protect, has the ability to make bank, lives an interesting life, all that good stuff. Oh, here's some comments from men. Oh, geez. Let's, let's deal with why the men, let's see what Megan has to say here. And there's drawbacks after this. Oh, I can't wait to get to that. Um, okay. So Timothy, Timothy, Timmy. Let's get on with Timmy. I have a tendency to mess up anything good in my life, so I prefer that my wife take charge. Oh, start from the get-go with disparaging yourself. I'm a nerd and I can't do anything right, so I wanna let my wife take charge. I don't have to concern myself with decisions that could negatively affect our relationship because you'll never make any decisions, dude. In all honesty, I just don't like making important decisions. She does a much better job. All right, Timmy. There's no power struggle, says Gavin. Gavin, isn't isn't there a there's a governor in the states? Gavin, it's in California, Neustrom. Everybody hates him, don't they? From what I understand, my buddy uh, Aubrey Huff lives out there. Power struggle. Okay, Gavin. Um, since we've defined our expectations and discussed our roles at home, discussed probably there was some negotiating in there too. As an added bonus, it has made parenting 100% easier. It's probably because you're doing all the parenting, you nerd. <laughs> Poor Gavin. All right, let's see what Dominic's got for us. My passivity has always been views, viewed as a weakness. My female-led relationship has turned what was perceived as a flaw into a strength. I'm grateful my better half proposed this arrangement. I no longer wonder if there's something innately wrong with you. Yeah, there is something innately wrong with you, dude. She's probably pegging you, man. Nor Norman. We got one in from Norm. Norm! I don't view this lifestyle as a preference. I see it as a necessity. I, <laughs> I work long hours and have to travel a lot for business. My home... Home is my escape. By being in charge of virtually every decision, my wife makes my life much happier and easier. Let's go back to this dude over here. Did he seem like he was happy? Then her controlling ramped up with an increased biting, a roller coaster indeed, and she demanded my obedience, my time, who I associated with, and freedom were under her control. Dude was not happy. He was pissed. All right, let's see what Megan's got for us on the drawbacks. I'm a longtime fan of female relationships for a variety of reasons, but admittedly, they aren't for everyone. To thrive, each couple must find the relationship style that works best for them. It's important to note that no relationship is perfect, and even good, solid relationships are rocky at time, whether to be traditional, blah, blah, blah. That being said, I'd like to share some insight. Okay, these are from the interviewees. <clears throat> best response when asked about the difficulty. Okay. Him and his wife, Maddie. So Mark and Maddie are the two of them in this one. Absolutely not, Mark said. We're determined to make this work. My wife's dominance made me insecure after losing my job. So we revalue the power dynamic and establish new boundaries. We're better than ever. So dude loses his job and is unemployed. And his wife's dominance kicks in. Actually, it sounds like it kicks into overdrive. Steven says, I felt like I was living a lie because I couldn't open up to my friends or family members about being a submissive at home. The stigma is ridiculous. Dude, it's... 
stigmas. I gotta, you know, I gotta laugh at this like progressive new world order of like the stigmas, you know? Who says that fat isn't sexy? It's, well, it's unhealthy and most men are not attracted to it. So wanna call it a stigma too? And I wish it didn't affect me or my relationship, but it did. So dude is, dude's basically getting called out by his family for being a little bitch. Dung is fun. The best thing about being a younger guy in shape is you can have older women and younger women. All the old guys will spend money to get them and I did not have to spend anything to get them. Yeah, so you're basically the alpha seed at that point. Women do that. These, these cougars go for the younger dudes, man, just to, just to get their uh, itches scratched sometimes. I resented my girlfriend for making decisions without me and filling in after making canceled plans. She always repetitive my concerns. Emilio. What's this one over here? Shayna. Well, pretty much everything. So here's what women had to say. It got exhausting. I'd work all day and come home to round two, home life. I was in control of pretty much everything. So I asked my husband to take on more response. So this is dealing with the drawbacks. She's coming home exhausted from work and then has to run the household. So I asked my husband to take on more responsibilities. I have the summers off. So she's a teacher. So how exhausting, you know, like is your day? I mean, you basically work from freaking what, 8.30 to three or something like that. And you have your summers off and you've got all these vacations throughout the year. Anyway, I have summers off. So I'll resume my dominant role while I'm on break. Right now, I'm just too tired. See, she's saying she doesn't want to lead. Flat out. She doesn't want to leave. It's too much work. I don't want to do it. It's too much work. Man. Kylie. It took a long time to establish boundaries. We should have sat down and written them out from the beginning. It was have, it would have saved, it was have saved a lot of, come on, Megan. It would have saved a lot of time, energy, and heartache. I'd recommend setting ground rules right away. Anyway, okay, so here's the tips. Don't rush it, talk it out, be patient, keep an open mind, consider each other's feelings, be mindful of your role, seek outside help. Megan's willing to help you out. Anyway, I think that's enough of that nonsense. Hey guys, I really hope that you enjoyed that short clip. If you did, consider supporting the creation of content by checking out my supplement line. Pinned in the top comment below of this video in the comments, there's a link to the unpluggedalpha.com forward slash shop. Uh, when you click through, you'll be able to land over here and the entire lineup is broken down by category that it performs best in, estrogen metabolism, fat burning, your foundational essentials for health, immune health, performance, and testosterone support. If you check out with coupon code alpha10, you'll get 10% off on your first order. There's also the option to use the subscribe and save model where regular shipments will be sent over to you on a regular basis. And that gives you a little bit of a discount and your supplement facts are always broken down over here. Thanks for watching. I hope you guys have an awesome day. And again, check out that link. It's pinned in the top comment below in this video. Peace out.